Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of Bitcoin Developers. I'm your host Connor Okus and today we've got a, an, an, another excellent episode for you. Um, we're going to be pivoting slightly. We've spent the last couple of weeks kind of getting familiar with some of the tools that are going to make it a lot easier and enable us to build uh, Bitcoin wallets and different type of applications uh, quicker, faster and uh be the catalyst for some of our creativity and uh speaking of creativity we can't speak of it without speaking about like the design side of things so we're going to pivot slightly today and try our hand at some design work um i've got my friend uh, christoph with me to to help us with that and in particular we're going to look at something called the bitcoin ui kit um so thanks every everyone to for joining love to to hear where you're kind of tuning in from um, leave leave some comments in the in the in the in the chat there. Um, we've got I think yeah we've got about ten people in the chat already. That's awesome. So I guess we could start with you, Christoph. Like, firstly, how are you? How are you doing? Good, good. Thanks for having me, Connor. I'm excited yeah. for this one in a, yeah. to uh, get some design interjected with with your uh, coding coding awesome, streams. Yeah. yeah, trying to kind of trying to bridge the gap, right? So that's what it's all about here. Um, yo, Sean has, uh, the, the Sean. Okay. Nice. Nice one, my friend. Um, so yeah, maybe we can start with like a bit of background about yourself. Like you're, you're a designer and you're working on Bitcoin, two things that are, um, not su super common. So, uh, how did you kind of, uh, get in, involved with Bitcoin and, uh, what's your kind of story in, into getting into design and kind of merging those two together? Shout out Vancouver, Canada. Thanks for Ooh. tuning in. Yeah. Oh, that's a, that's a super open-ended question. It goes back to all my childhood if you want to go back that far, but I don't think anybody <laughs> people are here to hear, hear all about that. But uh, essentially, um, you know, I spent a, um, I was exposed to computers very early on, but I always found myself dabbling with, on the creative side with things. And then I studied uh, traditional graphic design. And during that time, the internet got just blew up, but it wasn't big yet. Mm -hmm. um, and then instantly afterwards, I decided to get into digital design and started working for agencies, which I did for six, seven years. And then I went freelance for 10 years. And then at some point in 2017, my friend, who's a, who's a doctor, he, uh, uh, he worked at the emergency room. For some reason, he's the guy who introduced me to, uh, to Bitcoin and all of this. And he was just messaging me, sending me articles. I had no idea what he was talking about. But then after a while, I started looking uh, into it. Uh, more deeply, and I realized that there's a there's a whole world out there that was built in uh, in a whole community, and just so much depth there that I didn't even realize was there. Mm -hmm. um, so just uh, fell down that uh, rabbit hole, and then uh, starting design work was an was an interesting for, thing for me too because I had no nothing to do with open source, never really thought it, of it as a serious thing that that would somehow relate to me as a designer, as a UX person. Mm -hmm. Open source always seemed like it's this weird developer thing. But as a designer, there's nothing for me to do there. Uh, but that kind of changed uh, because one, uh, one evening, uh, and this was very early on in my, my learnings of all of this, um, I wanted to try a wallet. I had never tried a wallet before, so I wanted to find one. And I didn't know what any, like to me, any cryptocurrency was the same at that point. And somehow mm -hmm. I saw like, Monero is a good one. That's what I saw somewhere on Twitter or where else. So I just downloaded that one and I, I installed it. And I didn't know that you needed to download block data for 10 hours or so. So I was just sitting there like, why is this taking so long? Why do I see this loader? Why is it syncing blocks? What's a block? Why is there one million blocks? Didn't understand anything basically. Mm -hmm. So um, it was late at night and I was thought I'll just wait five minutes, see if that works. And it, it never finished of course. Uh, but so I decided, you know, the, the night was young. So I'll just redesign that wallet because I didn't thought it was particularly well done. So I redesigned it and at 2, 3 AM, I posted it on Reddit, in the Monero Reddit. And then uh, the next day they said, hey, I, we want to work with you. We think this is cool. And nice. that's how I started doing design work in open source. And I feel like I'm actually kind of lucky to start with Monero because there was a really friendly, awesome community with really good mm -hmm. values around privacy. 
they took everything very serious and they mm -hmm. learned a ton about open source development, about uh, designing with principles, not just, you know, you know, sometimes you work with clients or so, and there's like, they put these principles out there, but they're more marketing, but here it's actually really lived and it, it influences every decision. So then uh, I did that for two, three years or so, redesigned the whole wallet with, uh, with a group of people and just mm -hmm. really started to embrace this open source, open design way of working. And then um, at some point I saw the Square Crypto uh, application pop up. It was like, hey, it's a new Twitter account. We're looking for people and maybe designers. And that led uh, to to this uh, first uh, grant then, which uh, started right when the Bitcoin design community was launched. And that's what I've been doing ever since. And so I'm still I'm trying to, you know, really embrace all this open design principles, put everything mm -hmm. out there, work completely in public, help the community, put good resources out there mm -hmm. just to do what I can to to push this whole thing forward because I think it's it's a it's pretty awesome. Yeah, and um, maybe it warrants just a very very brief discussion, or in fact, it warrants its own episode really. But you just touched on a little bit about um, a grant from uh, Square Crypto or mm -hmm. formerly Square Crypto, uh, now Spiral. Um, what what's, what's, what does the grant enable you to do? And so before I basically did this on the side, I did full-time freelance work, always juggling two, three, five different clients at the same time, always having to look for new clients, manage just everything. Mm -hmm. So it was just something I had to squeeze in on the side. And um, I think it can work, depends on how deep you, your, how complex your work is in open source. But I do think there's, there's a level, like if you want to get a certain depth or certain quality if you want to do proper user research and build a whole design system and spend time talking to users and and do and like create a really good world class product basically you mm -hmm. need you need the time and energy to have deep focus and that's what that allows me to do and now my <laughs> what i'm realizing though is i'm i'm, I'm involved in a lot of different uh, things different things now so mm -hmm. i'm involved in in the community writing the newsletter organizing calls Mm -hmm. uh, help working with a design guide and all these other things, several other projects with a UI kit and icon set and we'll talk about later. Mm -hmm. um, but so it just allows me to to be super involved with all these efforts. If it was not for that opportunity with Spiral, then I would probably just have one project that I would be mm -hmm. contributing and kind of a, just on the side which then of course limits how much you can actually do. So it's for me, it's basically allowed me to truly shift my career in uh, in this direction. Okay, awesome. Develop time and energy, develop deep focus. Wonderfully said. Yeah, I agree with that. And so one of the um, things you're an active participant in is something called the um, Bitcoin design community. Um, maybe I'll share my screen here actually <laughs> and... Uh, give people a bit of an idea of what we're what we're talking about here um so what what is the bitcoin design community um and what does it kind of like mean from your perspective uh the community I just prepared a whole what? there's a whole by the way i'll show <laughs> that in two <laughs> days at fostem there's a presentation about the bitcoin design community fostem.org yeah. Go, uh, it's free online. So yeah, so check maybe out. you don't have to go into too much detail about maybe the community <laughs> aspects and people can tune into the FOSTEM. Um, but yeah, so maybe a little bit about the community and then one of the projects that the community works on is this thing called the Bitcoin Design Guide. So maybe do you want to touch on touch on that a little bit? Yeah, sure. I mean, re real quick, uh, before the community started, there were lots of design designers working on Bitcoin things kind of independently in their own little places. And the design community is an open space for everybody to work together, to discuss, share resources, because that didn't really exist. And, and a lot of people really wanted that. So that was kind of the, the idea, like a community owned, guided by whoever wants to participate in this. And then it, uh, the design guide is one of those projects where it, that, that comes out of this whole idea because it's like a human interface guidelines for Bitcoin applications. So instead of everybody independently working and starting from scratch and coming up with all the best practices independently, which is super hard, almost impossible if you're a single designer or even a small design team, the idea is to really bundle everything here over time. So if you're 
uh, designer completely new to Bitcoin, you'll find some uh, pages here that, that kind of softly introduce you to the whole topic. And then if you're working on a, on a product, uh, let's say you're working on onboarding or sending payments or so, you'll find whole uh, pages that, you know, with all the, the big ideas that you need to know, some of the technical underpinnings that are important to understand for design, and also how to execute those with, uh, you know, mockups and uh, tips on specific UI implementations and all these things. So it should be a pretty comprehensive resource. It's about, first version was launched about eight, 10 months ago. Mm -hmm. The version two is almost done, which now includes Lightning. The version one was just about on-chain Bitcoin. Now it introduces, includes Lightning also. And then afterwards, you know, we'll just just keep uh, keep polishing it. And you see the the all these design mockups here. This is essentially what where the Bitcoin UI kit came came mm -hmm. from. Because uh, while working on all these pages, we wanted not just to tell people what to do, but just show actually and provide these reference designs. They're not meant for everybody to just blindly copy them, but they're meant as reference designs. Where uh, if you're a designer, and you you know, starting something that you can very easily just copy paste them and you have a good foundation and you can make all the adjustments that you need for your particular project. So we did all these screens and then, you know, realized that we kind of have a whole design system here and all these different screens. So why not also make, make that UI kit, turn that into a UI kit and also make that publicly available. So it's a good, um, good complementary project to the guide itself, the UI kit. And it's really fun to work on. Awesome. I need to I need to re-review what's going on with the version two stuff because there's so much new stuff been added. I'm like, I'm kind of overwhelmed just scanning through stuff at the minute. But this is awesome. This is so cool. Um okay, and uh just lastly, then um around this kind of idea of open design and, and development. Um I did say earlier that it's not common to see um uh, developers and no I, I said it's not common to see designers and bitcoin kind of together um but that's probably not fair of me to say now that we have like this design community with over like two thousand members in our slack channel and people working on all sorts of things from more artistic endeavors to um wallet improvement pro projects to um more kind of like uh help with existing projects um wallet projects as well um uh animation for educational videos so like there's a whole array of different things people are working on in the in the design side of bitcoin um and so i would you say it's definitely the case that we're starting to see like more collaboration and more of a bridging of the gap between developers and designers in in bitcoin for sure, and I, th I think this whole split between design and development—it's—it's it's an organic thing that—that's not just a, you know unique to Bitcoin. I've seen that in agencies, I've seen it in big companies before. It's a normal thing, but really, the best products happen when everybody very closely works together throughout the whole process. And that's a, that's a second uh, that's a whole second aspect of this. The guide is a good resource. The I the UI kit is a good resource, but there's also this whole thing about design process. Um, and that is, that is almost a whole entirely different thing where you need experienced designers to kind of help get projects set up with a good design process. Because a, a lot of open source projects, they start with a single person just kind of developing something, coding away, and then you know other people like it and, and contribute to it, start helping out. But a design process was never really thought of. And I've heard that several times now. So uh, providing the resources, but also helping in, you know, introduce a design process in just the right way is also something that we try to facilitate here. And I do think we've seen some some things taken uh, uh, taken place. For example, mm -hmm. Albi is a good example, which started at a hackathon last year, and mm -hmm. John's one of the designers helped them out and did a design sprint during the hackathon. So much so that they spent fairly little time actually developing, but they went mm -hmm. through this whole design sprint. And then they embrace the design Slack, Bitcoin design Slack with their own channel and they're super active and that project has really grown. Mm. And they all have these public calls and uh, you know several other designers and other developers too have joined mm. in. And that uh, that's a really good example. I think something that has grown in a really nice uh, organic way 
kind of as a as a sub community subgroup in the design community yeah totally agree i just posted a link to their to their website getlb.com browser extension um okay cool well thanks for that um and i guess if people want to like find you and and uh, reach you is, is twitter a good place you've also got an, a lovely newsletter that you've started that I, I read when you publish as well to keep up to date with what you're doing yep twitter's a twitter's a good place it's all right there and the, the newsletter is um, another attempt at open design. Mm -hmm. Every Friday mm -hmm. afternoon, I'll just take 20 minutes and just write out what happened that week. Mm -hmm. It could be some important thoughts, could be some call I was part of, just anything that kind of stood out or just some things that stood out. But um, yeah, I'm just trying to mm -hmm. make this whole thing as public as I possibly can. And hopefully, you know, others do the same because I find it super interesting and, uh, and helpful when you learn more about uh, you know what, what are what the other people are interested in, what keeps them mm -hmm. busy, what they're working on, might open opportunities to help each other or have good conversations. Totally, totally. All right, thanks for that. So um, let's let's dive into the the practical side of what we're trying to do today. Um, we're going to be using something called the Bitcoin UI kit. Um, so do we want to maybe start with just uh, outlining like what we hope to kind of achieve in the next uh, maybe hour and 10, hour and 15 minutes so that people know what we've got in store? Um, and then we can try and just like, yeah, dive dive straight in. I'm going to try my hand at designing today, guys, or or Christoph more so is going to hold my hand through trying to do design. Um, so this should be funny at the very least. Um, so, yeah, where, where, where are we going today? <clears throat> yeah, so, um, uh, you know, there's no point in just designing for design's sake. We need a challenge. We need something that we actually want to do. And uh, I thought something good would be if we take one of those challenges from the Human Rights Foundation. And I mm -hmm. do think you have that open in, a, in mm -hmm. a tab there. So I'm sure people know the Human Rights Foundation. And they, they think Bitcoin is important because how, what's, a, what's a good way to describe this? Um, well, we can yeah we can even read this first one like strike and well this is this specific thing is like um, a strike and hrf collaboration and it says here strike and the human rights foundation are teaming up to support open source developers working to increase the usability and privacy of lightning wallets inspired by hrf's research around the world now i think a lot of the work hrf do um it's definitely targeted towards kind of um, activists and uh, people who are trying to fight for better, a better political climate in different countries around the world. And so Bitcoin is definitely a tool for them to um, receive funding to fight for their causes because many a time, a lot of their access to financial uh, instruments is cut off directly from those dictator uh, government so like bitcoin and lightning provides a, a mechanism for them to kind of fight against certain types of oppression um so they've got this bounty program and some challenges to um help with the adoption of some u better usability and and privacy practices with with relate as it relates to bitcoin um alex gladstein's a uh, does amazing work he's someone you should follow and um, if you're interested in like the human rights perspective of of bitcoin yes awesome perfect thanks for <laughs> thanks for that summary <laughs> so and they're, they're, so they came up with three different things that they like to see the second and the mm -hmm. third one are a little bit more on the technical side but the first mm -hmm. one's pretty good it's mm -hmm. basically asking uh they want wallets to support a tip jar so you have your basic wallet, you have your basic account, but somehow you can generate a QR code from the wallet and you can put that on your Twitter profile, on your website, you can share it with people, you could print it, put it on a store, and that mm -hmm. QR code will allow anyone then to just scan it real quick and directly send uh, Bitcoin over Lightning to that person. And ideally this is in a super private uh, fashion. So mm -hmm. public key IP address of the user should never be, um, you know, broadcast. Now it's that is that can, I think that can get technically very detailed. 
don't mm -hmm. think that's something that we should cover here necessarily because we just no. want to talk more about the uh, UI prototyping. But I think mm -hmm. just the idea of creating a, adding a tip jar to a wallet, which is not mm -hmm. part of the UI kit right now, and just thinking yep. through these flows will be a, a good, good uh, thing we can do here in an hour. Awesome. And um, yeah, uh, we've posted the link in the chat to the Strike HRF bounty page. Um, I just want to highlight as well that, um, you know, the, the, I'd imagine there's some designers and stuff watching this. There is a one BTC bounty for these challenges. So um, get designing, get helping. Um, this particular challenge is for, you know, non-custodial wallets that integrates Bolt 12. So already that's a lot of technically type of jargon there. Um, I don't know if we want to like just quickly say what like a bolt is, um, but maybe we maybe we should. So like bolt bolts are stand for um, basis of lightning technology. I think I might be butchering that, but it's something like that. And basically, it just outlines a specification for like different features within like the Na lightning network protocol. So we have um, like bolt eleven, which is kind of like your standard protocol for sending uh, invoices around and bolt 12 is just another um i guess payment protocol for uh yeah sending sending value around in the in the lightning network in a nutshell so like as a designer you might I, i'm unsure how much of like you know detail you how how many how how deep you dive down the rabbit hole of like specifications and stuff is like unclear to me. Maybe like Christoph and other designers might be able to answer that question better. Um, yeah, and you can actually go to, is it Bolt12? Yeah, Bolt12.org to learn a bit more about um, what it's all about. It's authored by uh, Rusty Russell, um, who works over at Blockstream and is one of the lead developers on the C Lightning implementation of the lightning protocol but um yeah it, some of the stuff it opens is the ability to like like christoph mentioned have this like static qr code that you can just essentially pay to or request an invoice and without the um without the recipient having to like initiate it or send you an invoice so we'll dive into like some of the specifics around that and then um from a design perspective and kind of like see how we get on um so let's see uh i guess also one bitcoin just for the design or does it have to be developed also uh that's a good question actually i think um, do, 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 it's not clear here but i'd imagine they'd want it developed that's a good question though uh, i'm not sure i'm not sure yeah i, th I think this is one of the things where it's um it's helpful if, if you proactively engage with with, uh, mm. with a team uh, yeah. and, and find somebody. And they're, they'll be really happy if you come up with, with an excellent uh, UX solution mm. and they simply have to implement it yeah, um, exactly. and focus on, on the technical things. So, But I would assume, considering the one Bitcoin amount, that they do want to see this, um, see want to see an implementation of this, not just the design. But you can okay. lead with the design. And I think mm. I've seen that sometimes too. Uh, in, in my open source, open design work, where you mm -hmm. come out, you make this beautiful design, you create a video, you create a prototype, you describe mm -hmm. it really well, you put it out there, and then you know some developer uh, will be just really motivated because they mm -hmm. see this and it looks cool, and uh, they just really want to make that happen. So you can also be led by design some of these collaborations. Mm -hmm. Totally. Um, so, okay, let's uh, let's let's go to the next step now so i guess we've, we we understand a little bit about what we're trying to trying to build today um so then um what what are the tools we're going to going to use obviously we know one of them is the bitcoin ui kit so maybe we can like switch over to here and have a little wander around this site and see what's going on before i guess starting to use it yep sounds good uh so that's uh, bitcoin ui kit.com mm -hmm. and um so it just provides a an entry point to this. The actual UI kit is a Figma file that you can, a Figma community that you can duplicate. But this mm -hmm. page is meant as an introduction to this because on, on Figma community, you don't have a lot of room to describe things. So here you kind of get this brief overview. And if you're familiar with uh, design systems, then 
this will be nothing new to you. So a design system basically means that um, every that it's everything is very componentized, that uh, all the colors are variables, your text styles are preset, you, you have all the icons nicely set up in all the right, right sizes that you need. Then you go up one level to your UI components, your buttons, your labels, input fields, and all of that. That those are all perfectly prepared and use those variables. Uh, and then you go up to a template and a screen level, um, which is very similar to the idea of the atomic design that some people might be familiar with. But uh, that gives you kind of all these Lego blocks that you need. Then. And that's something that you don't get with a design tool typically. Design tools just start with a blank canvas and you have to build all of that stuff. So when you use the UI kit, you get a very, I think, very well thought out uh, system here that then uh, makes it very easy to change everything because everything is just very nicely structured, similar to the way it would eventually then be structured uh, in an implementation. Like in code, you know, mm -hmm. colors are variables, text sizes are variables, spacing are variables, everything's just turned into logic. And yeah. um, this is kind of similar for, uh, for UI design. And plus it has a lot of best practices already baked in. So you don't have to come up with the copy for you know, your onboarding screens. There's already something that kind of works. Mm -hmm. um, you don't have to come up with every individual setting in the settings page. You already have kind of the most common ones in there. Mm -hmm. And here's an example. This, there's a light theme and a dark theme already in there. You can toggle between them right here. Oh, yeah. Um, and those are also integrated. It's all just a nice color system there. Mm -hmm. And then uh, on the screens page, you'll see uh, a majority of all the screens that are actually in the application that you can then easy, you know, just copy and mm -hmm. uh, and uh, adjust based on whatever you want your application to do. And at mm -hmm. the top, you'll see filters. So if let's say you just want to look at the onboarding flow, you click onboarding, and then you just see this series of screens. Like this is a very typical onboarding carousel that you see in a ton of applications. Mm -hmm. um, and the even those are very highly structured. Usually they talk about the primary product benefits, any unique features that the user really should be aware of, and then anything that they need to do before they actually start using the application. Like if, if it's a multi-sig wallet, you know, you need a hardware wallet, for example, uh, already. Okay. Um, so there's a lot of best practices uh, baked into this one. Awesome. Um, but now if and you just, want to get started. Okay. Yeah, just before we do, um, just to answer uh, someone's question earlier around, does it have to be developed? Uh, Bitcoin Xavier, if I'm pronouncing mm -hmm. that correctly, says that, yes, this has to be developed as well into a working application and not just a design. So perfect opportunity for some <laughs> developer and designer to come together yeah. and uh try and get that bounty right um cool yes right, and there let's... are two efforts on this if you so um what's his name matthew he developed a swift mm -hmm. ui library last year and he started implementing uh, uh some of these ui elements and screens and also mm -hmm. at summer of bitcoin last year somebody aman or anan i think he started uh, turning this into a React Native library, and he set up Storybook. But then mm -hmm. some of Bitcoin was done, he kind of moved on to other things. But that would be super amazing. I'm not the person to lead these things. I'm more on the design side. Mm -hmm. But if you could make that eventually happen, I think that would be uh, that would be fantastic. Okay, nice. Nice. All right. Um, let's, get, let's get cracking. I see this big uh, shiny button that says, like, duplicate on Figma. Is that where we're starting? Do it. Do it, yeah. All right, let's go. So duplicate on Figma. Uh, okay. I wonder if I should actually, instead of sharing my window, share my screen. Let me just uh, change over the view one second. Mm -hmm. uh, let's do this instead. Okay. And then I will share. I'll share my share my screen instead. I think it'd be a bit of a better view. Yeah, there we go. Okay, cool. So I've duplicated. Um, Not quite have, yet. Or, or, now, or you're a, <laughs> now you're on the on the landing page in the Figma community file, and that's. Mm -hmm. Uh, that before you duplicate, you copy the file, you, it allows you to kind of explore what you're actually doing. So Figma community is a place where 
any Figma user can publish files and they okay. are licensed under the Creative Commons. Uh, okay. So anybody else can just use those. And there are lots of really good resources. There are other UI kits for other types of applications. There are avatars, mm -hmm. there are all kinds of crazy and creative things. There's some really cool illustrations there too. Some mm -hmm. super highly detailed Yoda illustrations, and really cool stuff. Mm -hmm. And um, Eric Cartman co commented on this one, nice. Some scam looks like, spam looks like. Awesome. <laughs> cool. Awesome. <laughs> yeah, we don't want to uh, be shilling stuff that, yeah, anyway. Yeah, so I think uh -huh. uh, I published this a year ago or so and just regularly it just kind of push updates. So if you want to duplicate it, you can press the duplicate button in the top right corner. Mm -hmm. And then it will make a copy of it and put it in your own files. And okay. then, you'll be, then you'll be ready to go. Okay, sounds good. Um, let's, um, to give you a quick overview, on the left-hand mm -hmm. side, you see uh, pages. And the way that this is structured is that this is the community file cover. That's what you see when you browse the, browse it on the community. Then mm -hmm. we have a series of uh, individual user flows. So onboarding, multi-key wallet setup, wallet import. Some of them are more detailed, others aren't. There's actually a lot of changes and improvements I'd still like to make of the, uh, on these. So some of it is more work in progress. The automatic cloud backup is fairly complete because we have, that is pretty much one-to-one -one what's in the design guide also. Uh, so there's a whole sequence here for the uh, automatic cloud backup on a mobile device. Um, Multi-key wallet setup, that one needs a bunch of work still. Uh, because it's actually quite complex. You see all yeah, the different flows. I was going to say, yeah. Um, so that requires, that will require more work. <laughs> just need to get around are, to it. Are you looking for, just quick, are you looking for like help with the UI kit as well? Are you looking for like um, contributors or collaborators and stuff like that? Or Yes, it would be great. Or even, you know, even if you don't want to work on, uh, the, the first thing is if uh, if you have feedback, if there are screens or user flows that you'd like, if you see any mistakes in there, that would all be mm -hmm. amazing to hear. But then also mm -hmm. if somebody wants to contribute, we have the Bitcoin icon set also mm -hmm. and the UI kit and uh, some contributions would be, would be pretty awesome. Okay. For sure. Um, what is this one? Hardware wallet interactions. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is, this is something I think uh, uh, multi-key setup and hardware wallet interactions, they're usually I don't think they're executed very well in most mobile applications. Most don't even uh, in, uh, include them. Mm -hmm. um, so I tried to, last year, spent try to spend some time into simplifying these things. So for example, here are two different flows, whether you use a cold card or a Kobo vault, it will, and you try to, to link it or, or you know create a key mm -hmm. on there, then it will show you exactly all the steps you need to go through, which are pretty different based on what hardware wallet uh, you use. Cool. It's, uh, if you have an umbrella and you like to you're trying to connect a wallet, you also mm -hmm. have to pick what you're trying to connect, and it'll show you very different uh, instructions. This is pretty similar. Um, mm -hmm. So if you scroll a little bit further down in the pages, so you have all of these uh, flows. Then we get into the actual design system. If you go a little bit up again, mm -hmm. uh, for example, go to colors. Yep. These are all the colors here, and you can see how the, how the uh, light, light theme and dark theme work. Mm -hmm. um, on the right-hand side, in the right sidebar, you'll also see text styles and color styles. Okay. Yeah, so these are, all the colors are basically saved as variables in Figma. So mm -hmm. whenever a color is used in any of the screen mockups, it uses a variable. Um, and cool. let's let's do an example. Click expand the term light in the um, color styles on the right sidebar. So on the right hand sidebar, color styles and expand yeah. light. Yeah. Uh, highlight orange. Yeah. And on the right hand, tap that. Click that slider there. Mm -hmm. And click on the the square next to the hex value at the bottom. Yeah. The, that's colored square. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then if you if you just slide in that rainbow slider at the bottom, if you just slide that around. This one? Yeah, or oh, all the way. Or the, the actual, you see how oh, the this colors one. start. Yeah. yeah. So you see how the colors start changing on the screen oh. there. 
Yeah, okay. So that, that means that all the colors in the actual UI kit in the Figma file are linked Update to this automatically. one variable. Right, and that is you. then helpful later on if you're, if you're implementing things. Okay, cool. Um, yeah, if you go back to the pages, there are icons, mm -hmm. there are type definitions. This is pretty much from the Bitcoin icon set. So uh, I started creating lots of icons here, but then that turned pretty big and we realized, well, this, this could should be its own project. Now we have bitcoiniconscom which are also available uh, okay. as a Let me React quickly show that. And, uh, and um, node um, view modules. So if you okay. want so to So someone can like things, NPM install yeah. Bitcoin icons type of thing and uh, use it in front end applications and stuff, yeah? Yep, exactly. Mm -hmm. And uh, I think tomorrow I, I have some work to do. I need to add more Satoshi symbol variations mm -hmm. to this one because that's been, that was heavily requested. There's one okay. sat symbol in there, but uh, there was a request for more. Oh, uh, this one. Trying to trying to make people happy yeah. there. Yeah. All right. And this one, there's a version one. Oh, okay. Very nice. All right. Um, okay, cool. Yeah. And then uh, a little bit further, there are form elements. Those are your basic buttons. That's just standard stuff that's part of any UI kit. Mm -hmm. Then if you go to Bitcoin components, these are more unique to Bitcoin itself. So. Uh, mm -hmm. You know, this, this type of card component that you see at the top of wallets, uh, fee selector, um, selecting amounts with exchange rate, these yeah. are the type of things. But I, to be honest, um, I don't think you don't need a ton of super custom components to build Bitcoin wallets. The, no. the default UI elements that iOS, Android, all these systems provide take you mm -hmm. really far. And mm -hmm. then it, it just really depends on what type of wallet you want to design and how mm -hmm. creative you personally want to get uh, with the visuals and the, okay. the interactions. Interesting. Okay. Yeah. So that's kind of an overview. There are also NAV components, a bunch of other things. And further down, it's just all this other stuff. There's designs for the for the Bit2 and the iKid website, but we don't need to go into those right now. Okay. And it's, it's, is it, it's mainly... Um... Yeah, it's like mobile focus wallets mainly, isn't it? it there's not, I don't see much for desktop stuff or correct. For, Initially, the yeah. idea was to support both desktop and mobile. And here's the thing so I'm also using, or we're also using this UI kit for a new Bitcoin core application, which will allow for desktop and mobile. And okay. uh, it actually it translates very well. There are very, there are only minor things you have to change. The biggest mm -hmm. thing is really a responsive layout. You need to come up with mm -hmm. extra logic for how it changes uh, on, des on mm -hmm. desktop, where, for example, you want to have a sidebar. You don't want to have tab bars at the bottom. Mm -hmm. But the in general, the components, and the textiles, and everything work really well on desktop also. But yeah, it, do it does get okay. more complicated. And I think it would mm -hmm. kind of blow this UI kit out of proportion uh, to include every screen also on, mm -hmm. on desktop. Okay, kind of nice. Compromise okay. in some places. But uh, if you want to get going with uh, with our challenge mm -hmm. here, mm -hmm. then how about next to pages? You press the little yeah. plus and, yeah. uh, and we'll get started. Uh, what are we call in this then? Um, like HRF Bolt 12 challenge or something? Let's call it tip jar, whatever you like. Let's do it. It's your file now. It's not mine. You're the yeah, designer. Yeah, true, true, true. Tip jar sounds good. Okay. I've got this blank canvas, yeah? Yep. Now, th that's how every design file starts, right? Or that's mm -hmm. what I mentioned earlier, which mm -hmm. is very different than if you start coding where you pull in libraries, you have mm. in the browser, you have default components. Mm -hmm. uh, while on design, you always start with nothing and you need to build all the structures. And I think that's okay. sometimes why it's very difficult for designers to get things to be, to mm -hmm. be implementable in, in a directly. Right. Got so you. the... <laughs> before so when i think about these type of challenges the first thing i do is just write it out just bullet points basically mm -hmm. what to do or how would you uh, how would you go about this okay yeah that, that that seems to make sense to me um mm -hmm. so d would you like look back at the the brief that hrf provided and could you literally just copy it and have it at the top of the page or would you like to like break it down a bit more Yep, I think that's a that's a good start. That's a really good starting point. Just copy paste that text in there. Okay, let's see. 
And uh, another common thing that we're not going to do here is simply trying to find other wallets uh, that have this functionality. It mm -hmm. can be Bitcoin. It could be something completely different. It could be, I don't know, Venmo or PayPal, or whatever application has anything like it. Mm -hmm. I think doesn't BTC Pay has a way to create public pages for that you can be used for tipping, right? Uh, does BTC Pay have pages that can be used for tipping? Yeah, I mean, yeah, if you run your own like BTC Pay server instance, you can, mm -hmm. uh, yeah, like Andrew Child does it for his Twitch streams and stuff. You can use it for tipping, yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so there, I, I would pull in references, take screenshots, but we're not going to do mm -hmm. that. Uh, yeah. do that here today. Yeah. Um, so I would I would just take this text and then mm -hmm. and then split it up into into smaller pieces, just turning it into individual bullet points and kind of removing what we don't need. So, for okay. example, in the first wallet, the key sentence is any user can simply generate a QR code from their wallet. Right. That's. Mm -hmm. I would pull that out, put it into a separate text field or make it okay, a bullet so point or just somehow uh, isolate that piece. So that's mm -hmm. one of the basic functionality. Okay. And then uh, sharing with the world as a receive address or lightning tip jar. That's another good bullet point there. Share, shared. Okay. Shared with the world, receive address or lightning tip jar. Okay. Uh, so, um, if you want this um, text field, it's right now mm -hmm. it's set to have a fixed height. If you want that height to automatically adjust to the text content, yeah. Then um, in the right sidebar, somewhere in the middle, you see a outline square that's highlighted. Mm -hmm. If you mm -hmm. just press the icon next to it. Auto oh, height. height. Ah, that's there we what go. You want. Yeah. Nice. Okay, that's what we want. Cool. Okay. Um, yeah, the next piece is the QR can be pinned to a Twitter profile. Uh, store, for QR can be pinned to a Twitter profile, sure. Although QR could be pinned to a Twitter profile. Do you really want like QR? these ugly QRs is part of your Twitter profile. Anyway, yeah. that's probably a discussion for a bit later. Yeah. I mean, that's, um, that's the thing right now. Right now, I would just pull out all these individual pieces. Yeah, yeah, and I would yeah. just discuss them and think through uh, yeah. every single one and figure out okay. they, what they imply. Mm -hmm, and then mm -hmm. also displayed in a printed out and displayed in a store is also part of that, which basically means you want different uh, sharing and publishing options. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Then uh, sender scanning the QR should be able to pay X amount and that amount should arrive in the numbers cost. Yeah. So, yeah, I mean, the sender part seems kind of obvious. The amount should arrive in the no user's non custodial wallet. That's kind of mm. the piece there. Uh, should arrive in the user's non custodial wallet. Okay. And then not revealing the public key or IP address of the user. That's also another thing, especially for Human Rights Foundation, mm. for activists. They don't want this to be traceable uh, mm. back to people, which, of course, you know, if you post this on your Twitter profile, you mm -hmm. might have other, other, you know, privacy leaks there. So it, it, you always have to be careful with where you put anything, mm -hmm. uh, any of these type of invoice generators and lightning mm -hmm. addresses and whatnot. If you put them on your website, they can link you through the website domain registration. Mm -hmm. So the privacy part is, is very tricky. Here. It's very important. Yeah. Um, okay. So should, should, should we, okay. We've pulled out some of the main bits mm -hmm. here. Um, okay. Yeah. Can you just uh, switch the first two bullets around? Uh, the first two, sure. Uh, so. Um, so what, what would you do next after this one? Or what do you make of this uh, right now? What would I make of this right now? So I'm looking at my bullet points and I'm like, okay, the first one is any user can simply generate a QR code from their wallet. So um, maybe I think about it in terms of like 
a, a screen. So any user can simply generate a QR code from their wallet. So I'm looking at like, what actions do I want the user to perform to be able to display a QR code? Like how, how prominent does it need to be on the screen? Um, what information does it in involve or include? Um, yeah, what is the like call to action to make it yeah prominent on the page? Things things of that nature, maybe. Yep, yep. That's what I, what I, what I would uh, think about too. So, you mm -hmm. know, basically, you wanna you wanna create a QR code from the wallet. That means where would this likely be? Probably on the home screen. There would be. Mm -hmm some button maybe that's the little tip jar in the corner or so you would press it and then you would get to some screen where you would mm -hmm. manage that. And then you could uh, generate QR codes. The other question here is, is it a QR code or should it be possible to create multiple QR codes? Mm. Right? If, you're, if you're an activist and you do want to you know, make it harder to trace everything together maybe, or mm -hmm. you know, for, for other purposes too, um, mm -hmm. you may wanna have share uh, one uh, address or QR code with a different message than uh, a different mm. one, then mm -hmm. you may also want to have multiple addresses and that would then be, require slightly different functionality. We could decide mm -hmm. to just keep it simple in this UI mm -hmm. for now to just okay. have one tip jar or we could allow for users to create multiple. Um, okay. in, in the longer design process, you would probably do some research here and try to figure out what's the, like, what, what the actual user need is. Okay. Um, and then for the second part, for the next bullet, share with the world as a receive address mm -hmm. or a lightning tip jar. I don't really know what the difference is. Seems like mm. you just want to share it, right, in some mm -hmm. way. Mm -hmm. um, as you mentioned, QR code pinned to a Twitter profile doesn't seem super useful to me, to be honest, because... Someone made a comment about it could be like an NFT avatar but a QR code instead, uh, display pick. Mm. Yeah. I'm not sure I'd love scrolling to it and just seeing loads of profile pics with QR codes in there. True. But yeah. uh, maybe... I mean, you can you can pin tweets to your, pro to your profile and that tweet yeah. will always okay, be yeah, at the true. top. That's and then true, in that tweet, true. you could have an image. But the yeah, thing is, if, if let's say, you know, I, I use my phone here, I find, I come across your... Twitter account mm. and there's a tweet mm -hmm. with the QR code. How do I, like, I can't scan it with my phone mm. because mm -hmm. it's in there. So, but then mm -hmm. what other options are available? Um, is it possible to save a QR code to your photo library and have that automatically recognized? Mm -hmm. What's in there? I'm not really sure. So I guess it will have like, for people who are familiar with Bitcoin and Lightning addresses, will have like some long, ugly alphanumeric string in the pinned tweet or description of our Twitter profile, which is kind of uh, where I'm at with the protocol now, I guess an extension would be to have something a lot nicer and human readable, but let's maybe assume that's not possible for now and that it will be some long alphanumeric string that someone can just copy and paste into their wallet. Yep. And the other alternative would be to include lightning address which is a very human readable short format, but then it also brings other privacy problems. And it also requires more infrastructure mm -hmm. uh, to actually set up because you need to have a LN URL set up and, and other things. So maybe we could just put it in UI and not even worry about the technical details for now. But, yeah, uh, this, this is, is this is lightning address. All those lovely things like lightning address doesn't exist for now. Let's close our eyes <laughs> and just be like, but yeah. both 12, this is what we have yeah. to work with and we work within the constraints of that. So, okay. Yeah, so we just want to create the, the QR code and we want to be able to mm -hmm. share it, print it, tweet it, these types of things, yeah. Mm -hmm. um, and most likely that will happen through the default uh, operating system share sheet anyways, mm -hmm. which usually provides all of this functionality. But a QR um, code case might work well in, well, it will work better in person. Like if you want to just print it out, like it says yeah. here, print out and display in your store. That kind of scenario might be will be better in that case, I think. Yeah. Um, okay. What's the next one? Okay. Should arrive. So you know, at that point, it's live. We don't have control over what the P 
people who actually make a payment, what they do. Mm -hmm. uh, mm -hmm. They use some other wallet, you know. Mm -hmm. uh, but then the next part where it touches us again as the user of this uh, functionality is mm -hmm. when we receive uh, those uh, those incoming tips. Like we want to see that somewhere. Mm -hmm. so we could, we could although although out. just going just going back to should should arrive in a user's non custodial wallet, like. I've not read the bolt spec enough to know if there's a scenario where you know as the payer you've successfully paid the recipient or not. Um, or you can prove that you've paid the recipient and whether or not like there is some property that will let us know that that's the case and whether we should surface that to the user. That might be something to explore. You mean the, the payer? To let yeah. them know that it worked. Mm -hmm. I mean, they're mm -hmm. going to see those sats disappear from their wallet, so that should be indication for them. Mm -hmm. um, I think also usually, and this is something that I'm slightly fuzzy with, but the mm -hmm. pre-image is usually what's used. Uh, that is revealed kind of once once the the money has arrived, it's revealed and sent back. Um, that that or is even used the as the proof yeah. that uh, the the payment has arrived. Or even like if payment fails for for the yeah. myriad of reasons it could fail um not enough funds couldn't find a path users offline like all of these different scenarios could be where we think about this kind of you, you um this kind of use case so okay correct and if you uh the the bitcoin ui kit actually has some of those screens already so you don't even even need Ooh. to think about them somewhere Lovely. Uh, somewhere there's a, there's a whole section with errors. Uh, I think it's uh, in sending errors. or in receiving Bitcoin. Let's see, receive flow. Uh, mm -hmm. Let me zoom in a bit here. Uh, it might be under send. Send, it's just send. Okay, I see yeah, red here straight away. Right <laughs> side. Okay. Yeah, here there's like. The left one is right. you should oh, okay. not do it. And on the right, yeah. you see <laughs> examples of what error screens could look like. Transaction yeah. couldn't be completed. And then, you know, how to how to think about what to present to the user. Like, There's don't definitely a lot to think about, out, right, but... as well, because we've got, like, hmm. scary stuff, payment hash, and just long letters and numbers. And, like, it's hmm. red, and it's, like, exclamation mark. And it's like, ah, what's going on? And then... Um, this is a bit more subtle and nicer. The transaction could not be completed and blah, blah, blah. So I'm at this exactly. last one. And, and some... You know, one of the important things is to let users know that their funds are safe. Like nothing has mm. happened. That's one of the mm -hmm. most important things people need to know. Like mm -hmm. what happened, what it means for them, and then how they can fix this. Whether, mm -hmm. whether they can fix it or whether they need somebody else to help them. Like mm -hmm. if they should contact support, if they need to contact support where they can find it, what information they would need for it. They're just, mm. um, it, it's not like, this is not the fun stuff everybody wants to work yeah. on error screens, yeah. right? But yeah. uh, those are the things that if something goes wrong uh, and it's well handled in a, in a really good way, then people trust your application more because it helped them when something did go wrong. But um, yeah, so we don't have for this exercise, we don't have to worry about that, I think. Uh, how about we, we get going and we put some, we put some screens mm -hmm. together. Okay, so cool. What I would what I would usually do. Um, so where yeah, did I, the, where's my screen gone that I created? A little uh, bit further my, down. A little uh, bit further down. Further up. So what did I call it again? Tip jar. Tip jar. Where? A little bit further up. Okay, keep going up. Oh, there we go. Okay. You can also drag it all the way to the top if you want to make it easier to find. Okay, yeah, I think we're good this next time. Because we're, we're going to okay, switch cool. back and forth between a lot of pages. So the, the way that I would go about this now is I would copy-paste mm -hmm. screens from mm -hmm. all over the place, mm -hmm. uh, the ones that we need to kind of rough in this whole experience. Mm -hmm. So, for example, we want to generate QR code from the wallet. Mm -hmm. This is likely accessible from the home screen, so let's go and grab a home screen somewhere. Um, okay, home screen from somewhere, okay. Mm -hmm. Uh, where, where okay, it says home and transaction screen, so I might exactly. find a home screen in here. Yeah, so uh, the, there are several variations in there. This is a very simple one. The one on the yeah. left is uh, it's empty, you just created it, you don't have any Bitcoin yet, so there's a message there. Mm -hmm. And then the one right next to it is a wallet with some Bitcoin in it and it has mm -hmm. transactions, so we could, we could copy that one. 
Okay. Um, how do I? So there's this. Is this up here? Do I? This is where yeah. you need to literally hold my hand because I have no idea what I'm doing in Figma. So. <laughs> well, what, what do you know from any other program was it works? Control C. <laughs> yeah. All right. Cool. There's no uh, magic there then. Um, yeah. Cool. Yeah. So if you if you use Figma Whoa. a lot, I really recommend. Uh, yeah, I would uh, do not resize it. I do. Oh, is it going to is it going to make it look ugly if I do that? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, what is it? You can press Control C to undo a few times. Uh, Control Z. Yeah. Hey, there you go. Yeah, you can just select and drag the whole thing. Yeah. Okay. There you go. Cool. Yeah, so in that one, then we could figure out how we access this tip jar functionality um, mm. and we can get to that. And then let's see, what other screens do we might we need? Uh, so we we'll go back, let's go back to what we're talking about here. Um, do we want to yeah. allow people, to, do we want to have like a tip jar landing page? So we could, we could do tip that where page. I can create mm. one or five or 10 tip jars. It could also mm. be just a landing page where you know, it shows my tip jars and any transactions tips that I've gotten. Mm. It's kind of self-contained. Um, so, so maybe we could use one of those. Um, maybe we could use one of those onboarding type screens. That is like the landing page for the for the tip jar page. Or um, yeah, it depends how we like. How do we get there from here? Maybe. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, in, in this case, I would mm -hmm. just, here in the top left corner, there's this little character avatar mm -hmm. icon. Mm -hmm. For this exercise, I would just, I would, we don't, we don't have a tip jar icon in the, in the icon, in the UI kit, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, but let's, why don't you click on that icon real quick? Mm -hmm. Okay. And double click on it again. Yeah, again. Yeah, so, okay, that's good for now. Let's take a look at this one. So in the left side, you see uh, the layers of this mm -hmm. and everything that's purple, that's a component. So that's mm -hmm. something that's, you know, it's an instance of a main component and it inherits all of the properties of the main component. Mm -hmm. And this is nested. So there's like a top bar component that you can configure with different types of buttons left and right. Like if you want to, do you want to have like a text button on the left, an icon mm -hmm. button on the right? You can configure it any way you want. And okay. then inside that button is an icon. Uh, now on the okay. right hand side, you see the properties of this uh, layer. And if you click on contacts there. Oops. Uh, if I click on contact, yeah. Mm -hmm. That will allow you to change the which icon instance you want to use in this case. Uh, so you see this whole layer. These are all the icons that are in the UI kit. Mm -hmm. And then you can click through and you can go through. And maybe mm -hmm. you maybe there is something that actually works for this uh, tip jar purpose. Probably not. Well, there's a milk mm -hmm. jug. Maybe that's, uh, <laughs> that's somewhat close. Can we um, lighten in eyes to general milk jug? I like the feel of it. Question There's a mark. sofa somewhere. Yeah, it so the milk jug's in there for. Um, there's a component that that allows <laughs> that that uh, the idea was there to organize your transactions by category, just like you would do personal financing. You would have these are my my expenses for rent or for my car or for something else, uh, and then you know the sofa represented I think home. And the milk mm -hmm. jug represented groceries and these type of expenses. So yeah, you can just pick one. Um, milk. So okay, now this is the this is now a tip jar. It's not a milk jug anymore. Okay. So let's yeah, use I'm, that I'm one feeling it. Yeah, I'm feeling it. I'm yeah. feeling it. Let's do it. So that's okay. going to be our, our entry point into the tip jar yeah. screen. All right. And uh, I think you had a good idea there with those onboarding screens because when you get there, uh, you know, the worst thing. That, that you could we could do here is you go to the screen and it just says well there's nothing here you haven't done anything right mm, you want mm. to introduce people to this functionality so you mm. could copy um, one of those one or two or three of those depends on how many we want so uh, let's here. do yeah maybe we can just do one to start mm -hmm. with let's do this one and take it over to here um 
cool. And like, I guess we'd want to update, obviously, the copy and stuff. Mm -hmm. um, maybe Here's a tip: if you command click something by, by default, when you when you select uh, a layer, then mm -hmm. you know you select the main layer, and then you can select like the double click, select a layer in there, and and you you mm -hmm. click you click double click deeper into the structure. But mm -hmm. I have it so much memorized, I don't even know the commands anymore. I think if you okay. command click, you go directly deep into whatever you're hovering. Right. And Got then you. you just double click and you can change the, the copy here. Mm -hmm. um, so, I guess we don't need to think too hard about copy and stuff, but um, what, what do we be, want to Let's see? set up your tip jar. Yeah. Mm, looks weird about that. That maybe Trademark. like that. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, so this uh, this tells people what we're about to do here now, and then we also mm -hmm. need to give them some more background of what this actually means. Mm -hmm. um, you know, what do you? Um, this is a so, special account that mm -hmm. I don't know uh, yeah. that you'll be able to share publicly to accept tips. I don't know, so some, we would have to come up with some type of copy, like how yeah. this fits into the this, this wallet application, what benefits it uh, provides to you and how you can personally use it. And right? you kind of want to know, uh, is, this, is this, do I get the QR code? Is this something that I send people by email? How, how, how am I going to be able to use this? So this mm -hmm. should usually, Usually you try to keep this to five to 10 lines of text maximum. You don't want to overwhelm people. You just mm -hmm. want, to, want to cover the most important things. And especially mm -hmm. here, if there's anything that I need to prepare beforehand, there are some, some other application I worked on. <laughs> there's a, you know, you needed to have, have some information from your credit card or your driver's license, or you need to have, okay. have something ready for it. So if there's okay. anything here, that's also a good thing to include. Okay. Um, do you think we need more screens or do you think one of them is mm. enough? Good question. Let's go with one being enough for now. And like, mm -hmm. I want to, I want to optimize for less amount of kicking around as possible. Okay. Um, and like the next thing I want to do is try and generate a QR code mm -hmm. or, or um, try and generate a QR code. Let me think. Let's go back to what we're think, talking about here. So share with the world as receive address. So, oh, okay. So, well, QR code or receive address really should be the next kind of thing we think about. Um, as well as some, maybe some information around like, oh, you can, you, this is like uh, long lasting, this, this won't expire. You can keep it in your profile like, whatever yeah. type of information might be useful. Yeah. Um, but those are all good details to think through. Um, yeah, you, we don't need the skip mm. button at the top. Um, yeah, so we can get rid of that. You also don't need the pagination at the bottom, those little dots. Uh, those are not that great mm -hmm. anyways. I typically don't, don't ever use them. And part of it is that a lot of mm. these onboarding flows these days, they, they are, are not just linear mm. but they include a lot let users make multiple choices and that changes the path so sometimes you have two screens and then you have five screens and then these dots are just they just don't work how do, how do i click into these dots is oh there we go there you go yeah oh you just deleted one yeah here's, here's, oh, a, no. here's a tip Come hold on. on before you do anything okay, you have okay. it selected press mm -hmm. shift enter so that mm -hmm. allows you in the layer hierarchy, it selects the parent of whatever you have selected. Ooh, ooh, if you nice hit thing. enter, it selects all the children. If you hit shift enter, it selects all the parents. Shift that is super enter. handy for quickly mm -hmm. uh, selecting lots of things okay. at once. Saves a lot of clicking. Sick. Um, I deleted the text of the button by mistake, but I think that's going to change anyway. Um, just It's still there. It's just hidden. Oh, oh, oh. Okay. We'll go come back to that in a second. Just want to read yeah. a few comments, see what's going on. Um, if you made it this far with us, make sure you press follow on the Twitch. If you're watching this on the YouTube, like, subscribe, share, all that good stuff. Um, yes, you are right. 
the requirement is open to interpretation. The key aspect is non-custodial lightning, Vault 12 QR to receive payments. Use case is for donations to be collected without privacy leakage. Wonderful. Users may decide to put on Twitter or print on a shirt. I don't... F- I find it hard to think that people are going to be like walking around with like QR codes on their <laughs> top, of it. like people are gonna... <laughs> But I, I'm actually thinking about it with this whole like football thing I'm doing. Like maybe like the players have like QR codes on their shirt, and they're like after the game, like fans give them tips as they're like walking back into the tunnel. Who knows? Who knows, man? Um, but cool. First time playing with Figma, amazing stuff. Yeah, this is like I've only played around with Figma a dozen times and uh, most of it's pretty intuitive um, but let me not talk too soon uh, what, what, what are we up to next? Okay, uh, <laughs> so I have, I, have a, I have a question for you with uh, with tip jar. so mm-hmm. what I find tricky sometimes with, with sharing QR codes is just, it's just a QR code there's no context mm. so I'm wondering mm. if, um, if there should be like a default message so when you share this QR code it also adds this default message somehow okay. to whatever you're sharing. So if I quickly like share by iMessage or WhatsApp or so, it mm-hmm. pastes the QR code and also that message with it. Like should we should be should the user be able to add more or is that enough? Should I be able mm. to call this like my tip jar for I don't know open source okay. donations or so like do we want to be able to customize things or does it not that's a good question. Like a description, maybe. Yeah. Mm. Um, yeah, I'm trying to think if you have, mul- yeah, especially in a scenario, if you have multiple, like you'd imagine it, it makes sense. Although... It, it also yeah, becomes more you... more inviting, right? If, if, it's, mm. if it's personalized, maybe you can pick the color, you can put your face on it. I don't know. So it's mm. just maybe silly ideas, but mm-hmm, um, mm-hmm. it when it feels more special, maybe you will get more tips. And the other thing that I was wondering too is if you wanted to have more advanced functionality, then this application could also allow you to create a hosted page for, Mm, uh, yeah, to receive donations. That would Mm -hmm. be additional functionality, but maybe we can skip all that stuff and we just focus on no configuration. We're just going to get this uh, QR code. Just going to get this QR code and uh, receive address. All right. So we do have some. We do have a page for QR code somewhere. I think I remember. Yeah, uh, check the receive flow page. Receive flow. Okay. All right. Cool. I see some lovely QR codes here. And uh, okay, so let's receive. This is uh, what is the amount? So um, that's interesting, actually, because is there like a minimum amount? you'd like to receive as a donation or can someone send a minimum amount of satoshis um, um do you want have to, to look st- at the spec mm. but yeah i think i think it might be helpful to have uh some type of recommended amount that then don- donators could still overwrite okay sb so you can do a fixed or minimum amount okay but I don't okay. think you necessarily need that. That's something that mm. you could be... So that second screen here, that's basically what it is. We would just have to change the title. Mm. Um, okay. And then we could we could say that, okay, you can expand the settings and in the settings, you would uh, you would be able to, to adjust everything. So this is kind of the easiest flow where you know, mm. you're on the home screen, it tells you what it is, and then it gives you this payment request. Now, as you yeah. said earlier, People might be yeah. missing some information here uh, mm. because default lighting invoices, they expire and this one doesn't, but mm-hmm. it's not explained anywhere. Mm. So there would be all kinds of things you'd have to make sure that you cover, whether that's directly in those screens mm. or whether you just have an info button somewhere that, that allows people who are not quite sure about what they're looking at to pull that up and read all the details. That's then, you know, some more fine grained design decisions. Mm-hmm. And um, okay, thanks for those comments. So uh, the QR code can specify no amount as well. Okay, excellent. Um, and that feels more natural in a donation scenario, right? Like, I think. 
So here, mm -hmm. you know, I, I feel like a lot of times with donations, I've seen and I've heard that defaults really matter. Oh, because okay. people want to okay. be guided. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah. So true. if if the default is ten cents, then mm. most people will just give that. They're like, mm. "Well, you want ten cents for me? Okay, I'll give you that." If it, mm. if you think ten dollars or euros. But is that is that to do with we're not going down that rubber? Is that just to do with like um, I know it's, it wouldn't be ten cents, but is, are, the, are the minimum fees the result of like some of the fees that um, payment processes take and stuff? Whereas in this environment, like in theory, for the most part, you can literally pay fractions of a penny at zero cost. Yeah, I, th I think if you're if you're sending two satoshis or five or so, then the fees will be the majority of your the, the of, of what you're sending because there's like one satoshi minimum fee and then there's percentage fee or so that mm -hmm. might add, add up based on how many hops there are. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. So, but I don't think donations mm -hmm. are that low, really. Like, who, mm -hmm. like who donates like two Satoshi? What's the point of that? <laughs> like, well, Every Satoshi here. counts, man. Every <laughs> Satoshi counts, man. Well, in um, this way, in this case, the routing <laughs> nodes would be more happy than maybe the recipient. Yeah, in a world where it's one sat, one dollar, um, might be interesting. But okay, so we got this share payment request um, screen QR code, and we got these buttons: share and copy. So share as in share the QR code, because we've still got this thing about we need to like share a receive address and I'm not seeing anything related to like receipt, like a receive address or I just have this QR code thing and like does copy mean I get a receive address? Does share mean I'm sharing the image or receive address? Um, yeah, and the... Share payment. Re so two things here: the the back button, probably mm. not needed because mm. you know you would just go back to this. Um, if you had shift enter again, uh, shift enter. Yeah, and then you should be able to kill that one, kill that button. Oh. Uh, actually, let's. How about you you undo real quick mm -hmm. and hit shift enter again to select the top button bar. The top button bar. So on the right hand side in the top button bar, you see a toggle for a left button. And you can just um, untoggle uh, that one. It's in the sidebar all the way on the right. Oh, on the right. And then toggle off left button. Yep, okay. There you okay. Go. okay, cool. So that, that is a that is a property of that component where you can just right, right. Uh, quickly toggle in which elements you want and then you can customize them. Okay. Um, yeah, so share payment request. Is it the right title? Mm -hmm. Share payment request. It doesn't feel like very tip jarry, to be honest. Um, share payment request. Hmm. It doesn't. F it's it's accurate, but it doesn't feel like. For me, I don't know. It just doesn't. It doesn't tell me like what mechanism I'm using to share. Like share where, share as a in just a, in a chat app or share as in a link or because it's got like stuff about copy. So it is a little bit. It's not super clear what that means. Um, yeah, I can't think of anything better on the spot, but. I mean, the simple thing would be to say, uh, "This is your tip jar code." If any, if you, if anyone else has any uh, suggestions, I think Christoph might have frozen um, while he's coming back in, or is he still there? I'm still here. Oh, uh, okay, you're still here. Okay, you're still here. Yeah. All right, cool. Yeah. So I, I would just call this. This is your tip jar code, and um, on the left hand side in the previous script, I would make sure to explain uh, that. Uh, this, you know, your tip jar is a payment code that you can share on social media or on your website where you can print it out and other people can scan it to make donations with you. That's a type of, uh, to you, mm. that's a type of copy that I would put in there. And then the next screen mm. actually makes more sense. Mm. And I think it's a lot of times it's underappreciated. Like UI design is like 90% mm. copywriting. Mm. Some of the most important stuff, and I've heard that from various UI research, UX researchers too. 
that the things that trip up that they found in user testing is the copy. Mm. Properly labeling things, giving clear instructions. So it's a super important thing to get right. Okay. Yeah, so you know, now we have this, and one thing to the share functionality, uh, I don't know which iOS version it was or Android version, mm -hmm. but they introduced these super handy share sheets that uh, based on mm. what the application provides that share sheet, it can say, that, mm -hmm. well, here's a piece of text, here's, mm -hmm. a, here's an image, here's a link, and then it will show the appropriate function. Also, uh, a a share features also based on what apps are installed, which is important right. for uh, localization. So if you're in China, somewhere else, you have very different apps than in Europe or so. Right. And also what apps the user has actually used and also recently, you just get, see a list of contacts and you just tap somebody's face and it will share them. Okay. Um, so usually those share sheets cover things like uh, print, save to photos, you know, share to Twitter or so. so Do we have one of those usually, in the component in this uh, UI kit? Is there one here or? I am not sure. Um, share sheet is called, right? Where yeah, would this share anything, sheet be made? Be, maybe it's, it would yeah. be under receive flow, I think. Mm. I don't think there is one. Okay, that might be that might be one to add to the list, maybe. Yeah, but the the good okay. thing is then that uh, we don't need to worry too much about that. Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. That's just native to iOS, yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Where do we where are we going next? We've got probably about ten minutes left, um, mm -hmm. um, so we can try our best to to get as much in as we can, and then we'd love if okay. the if the viewers uh, can uh, take on the rest of the challenge. Yeah. So uh, a simple thing we can do here. So just on that screen on the right, uh, sharing the. Maybe 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 a toggle if you see the, the textual representation or the QR code representation is something that, so you could just share the textual representation if you wanted to that receive mm -hmm. address. Mm -hmm. uh, we don't need contact here. We may not need note and tags. Um, those could be deleted. And then another activity would be to think through the details and settings. There is okay. an extended version of these details and settings. There's a screen for it. Mm -hmm. And I think... Um, What's in there? Minimum amount would go in there. Uh, so we have a maybe, maybe, you say, you, you say we've got a setting setting screen somewhere. Uh, okay, yeah, in screen. the in the receive flow, uh, okay. it's just it's not a setting screen. It's just a little panel that's expanded. Oh, uh, okay, this one. Like there's a ver. <laughs> Is that yeah, this so one? That, that's exactly it's something like that. A little panel that lights up, and then it shows you uh, the address, which would be, in this case be uh -huh. the receive address. You could set Maybe a minimum copies. amount. The some of the other functionality doesn't really apply here, right? Mm -hmm. Legacy address is on chain. Notify when confirmed, also an on chain thing. So you could hide those. Okay, so this would be. Uh, oh, not that. Is that that? Okay, mm -hmm. and then address would be like for the sake of we can leave this for now, but it would be um, a lightning address. Yeah, a bolt, bolt 12 code, Yeah, which in the Bitcoin design guide, there is a page called payment mm -hmm. request formats. There is an example mm -hmm. uh, of that. Okay. Um, and how about uh, another thing we can do here real quick in the next 10 minutes is just hook it up mm -hmm. to a clickable prototype. Okay, let's do that. Um, mm -hmm. 50 pounds of horse. <laughs> okay. I don't think we need a description here. Yeah. Unless, you know, oh no! Like oh, a, did, we didn't yeah. talk about earlier about like yeah. if you have multiple that you might want to. I don't know a description of like mm, this is or, the QR or a code default up. message, right? Yeah. So would this be the description of like where I put this QR code, like in my local church or something, or like? Um, it could be a personal note just for yourself. It could be something that gets added when you click that share button. So if you press the share button, the share sheet comes up, you click mm -hmm. Twitter, and then the, the, pre, the tweet it creates in the Twitter app would have the QR code as an image and it would have that text. Could be something like that. Like if you frequently share mm -hmm. this QR code with a message, this mm -hmm. would allow you to you know, 
have kind of a preset message there. But that I think you'd have to think yeah. more closely through the design yeah, sure. details here and your specific user needs. All right, cool. Um, so we wanted to like make this prototype thing so it's clickable mm -hmm. and you can do stuff. Uh, how do we do that? Cool. So in the right-hand panel, uh, right at the top, you see tabs, design, prototype, and impact, uh, inspect. Uh, you want to uh, go to prototype. Uh, prototype. So inspect, that's for developers. Ooh. That's where a developer can come in, they just click something, and they see you know, just the variables and properties and width and height. They can measure things, how big they are. It's mm -hmm. pretty handy uh, for that. Mm -hmm. But we want to be in prototype, and we want to create a new uh, flow. But go, um, so the way that is, this usually works is mm -hmm. you select an element, and then mm -hmm. you drag, you create an interaction on that element. And then you say, OK, ah. something happens whenever I hover over this, or I click mm -hmm. on it, or I double click it, or right click it. Right, That's how it starts. Mm -hmm. And then you, typically, you drag a connection to another screen. And then you say, OK, like when this interaction happens, show this screen. And you can say it should come from the bottom or from the top, from the right. Got you. It should be quick, slow, whatever you want to do, or instant. Those are the mm. options there. So, so you... I guess we want to use this milk thing mm -hmm. uh, as the kickable thing to go to our tip jar screen and then so on and so forth. Correct. OK. So just double click again until you're, you have that object. Yeah, and you mm -hmm. see there's a little circle there to the right, just yeah. drag that one over to the second screen. Yep, just like that. So now you've cool. created now you've created this interaction. And on the right, you see the interaction details. Mm -hmm. And that's I think that's also pretty straightforward. It says, when you click this thing, mm -hmm. you navigate to this other screen. Okay, and then nice. animation, instead of instant, you can say, uh, if you change that to like uh, move in, is usually what you want. In. And then okay. uh, if you hover over that little preview area, if you move your cursor out and back in, it'll show you what that animation looks like. Ooh. OK, so it's going to slide in from the right-hand side. OK. Yeah. And if you uh, it's very kind top, of overlay flip. Yeah. Um, Let's preview okay. that real quick, see what it looks like. You press exactly that one, the present, present button. OK. Uh, all right, so this is the home screen I had. If I mm -hmm. click on the milk jar, I get this nice overlay yeah. transition. Okay, that's pretty good. And this uh, prototype, um, this clickable prototype, is it something I can share, like, with people to test with, and like, I just send them the link, and they can play around with the prototype yeah. and stuff, or they, they don't have to like um, duplicate the Figma file or anything like that. You can just send them the link and that off you go kind of thing. Correct. Yep. You can just share that. And uh, I think there are also ways to leave comments mm. and some other options. Uh, but yeah, this is exactly what it's meant for. You can just share that. You can pull it up on your, you can pull it up on your phone and click around, which is super okay. handy. Oh, OK. Um, that's nice. So really works really well. And it's also works great. <laughs> prototypes actually work great for general presentations too, like for the Fostem presentation, we just use Figma prototypes. Oh, nice. OK, and then I can link it to this page, I guess. On click, navigate. Um, yeah, it's true. Then... Steven saying you could share the share the, <laughs> the prototype link in the chat. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how exciting people will find this. But, um... <laughs> Why not? Why not for, for yeah. some giggles? I don't know if that works, if you have to oh, use the share prototype to... button. That's, uh... Oh, OK. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm yeah, not yeah, sure yeah. the other one could work, too, but I'm just not sure. Uh, just copy that link. To add and... editors, first move to the, the copy link, I guess. Copy link. Yep. Yeah, you don't want editors. You just want viewers. OK, this ugly URL. I posted it in there for, for, there some, gigg for some giggles anyway. Um, all right, cool. So we're let's uh, we've got five minutes left. So let's um, let's wind down and this kind of uh, will end the the practical portion of this. Um, let me see if I can change, stop sharing, and go back to this. Um, 
Okay, cool. Um, yeah, that was that was I was that's my actually first time playing with the UI kit, and like I felt like a designer, and nice. like I'm not, <laughs> and I'm not, and it's it's like it's really easy to just like copy and paste things around, like change text, change colors, just like get some thoughts out in a more high fidelity kind of kind of manner. So it's like it's really nice, and I can definitely see a lot of um, engineers using this for sure um as well as designers um so alarms going off i think my brother's like burning down the house um so we can spend maybe like five minutes as well answering any questions people might have in the chat submits figma link to <laughs> lovely lovely i'm not sure like we're gonna get that one btc but you know like <laughs> That one BTC might be worth a lot in a couple of months or a couple of years' time. So definitely, like, get get working on that challenge. But if yeah, if anyone has any questions, feel free to to send them in the chat. Maybe zero point one BTC. Yeah. But you know, yeah, I was maybe. I was I was actually thinking we should really do that. I think as a design community, we should exactly pick up these types of uh, challenges. Mm -hmm. The Human Rights Foundation. It's for a really good cause. Yeah, uh, it's for a brand new feature. It's like it's cutting edge mm. lighting technology, and it yeah. allows us to proactively shape the, those experiences. So, I think mm. it would be cool if some you know if some people want to get on another on another stream and collaborate on a Figma file. I think mm. pretty quickly we could we could make something really cool here, and mm. we should we should share that with them. And maybe you know maybe they had other applicants that are maybe more technical, and there could be mm. a collaboration coming out of this one. So. Um, I know, I know we're kidding here, but mm -hmm. we could also we could also go at this and, and take this opportunity. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, okay, cool. So I'm just making sure I haven't missed any comments. Um, the React, okay, the, there was one about React Native module. The React Native module is one currently under re re review. Um, with a Z, Xavier, Xavier. Okay, cool. Yeah, I'm really bad at pronouncing names, so sorry. I'll, I'll I'll do my best. Um, the React Native module is one of is is the one currently under review. React Native requires its own special module because the phones don't have native SVG support. Okay, correct. Cool. And talking about yeah. React Native, I'll <laughs> post something in the chat here too. This is uh, Aman. Uh, what I mentioned earlier in the um, summer of Bitcoin, he coded up. Um, this wallet UI kit in React. He got pretty far. It's pretty awesome. Uh, okay. His mentor, Tankrid, he told me that Amon was just, just added. He just made, made things mm -hmm. happen. Um, so uh, it's gone quiet now. I think he's mm -hmm. busy with other things. Student, I'll be back to studying. Um, okay. But there's also, I think it looks, there's a demo also you can check out. Actually, let me share my screen. Let me share my screen on that actually, because uh, uh, what do I want? In, yeah, I want window. Um, okay, I'll show that in a second. But yeah, the summer of Bitcoin thing that Christoph was just talking about is a. Uh, if there are any like students on watching, it's a it's a summer program <laughs> designed to like onboard you to contribute into various types of Bitcoin projects if you're a developer. And there is also a design track as well. So there's a few members from the Bitcoin design community who will be mentors helping helping students through their summer programs as well as on the development side as well. So check out summerbitcoin.org. And uh, my team over at Spiral are also hiring for a creative lead. So you should definitely check out our website and the blog post we've got about um, what we're looking for. It's a super interesting role working with a super interesting team. So if anyone in this uh, chat is interested or if anyone that happens to watch this after the fact, then uh, yeah, head over to spiral.xyz and uh, send your applications in to apply at squarecrypto.org because we haven't changed our email address yet. Um so yeah with that being said i think we uh, are ready to kind of wrap up um right on time for once and uh 
Christoph, I want to thank you for, for showing us the Bitcoin UI kit today. I um, want to thank you for your, your contributions thus far to the Bitcoin design community and the Bitcoin ecosystem in general. And like, yeah, hopefully we can continue to, to build really good stuff, continue to bridge the gap between designers, developers, give Bitcoin the love and care and attention it deserves from a UX point of view and um, just keep it make keep making things happen man let's do it and thanks for everybody who tuned in yeah feel free to reach out on twitter slack wherever Mm -hmm. else always happy to talk about these things awesome all right guys thanks for tuning in and we'll see you on the other side peace